From afar, this may appear to be just another beach, but in reality, this is the National Lakeshore Sleeping Bear Dunes, which is located in the northern left-hand side of Michigan's Lower Peninsula. The park includes two islands approximately six miles off the shore, 35 miles of lakeshore, and the largest collection of freshwater sand dunes in the world. These dunes cover about seven miles of the lakeshore and can rise as high as 460 feet above the water surface. This covers about four square miles of land. For context, that's about twice the size of RIT's campus. The park is named after a native Ojibwe story about the park's formation involving a mother bear and her two bear cubs. Before places had names and before people inhabited the land, a mother bear and her two cubs lived in a forest on the coast of modern Wisconsin. One evening, lightning struck, setting the forest ablaze. To escape, the bears were forced to swim across Lake Michigan, although they could not see the other end. They swam for multiple days before Mother Bear made it to land. Sadly, her cubs didn't make it to shore. Mother Bear climbed onto the tallest bluff overlooking the water and laid there looking for her cubs. Seasons passed, but Mother Bear never found them. To honor Mother Bear's dedication and love for her cubs, the spirits of Ojibwe covered her in a blanket of sand to keep her warm through the changing seasons. And they raised her cubs from the water steps in the form of islands such that Mother Bear could watch over them forever. Would you believe me if I told you this wasn't even the saddest version of this story? Don't worry though, I'm not going to tell you two sad stories in a row. Instead, let's take a step back. What does it even take to be considered a dune? A dune is a richer mound of sand formed by wind or water moving loose sediments into a pile. A dune typically forms in locations with foliage or other obstacles that can both block the movement of the top sediments and hold the underlying sand in place. Without these obstacles, the sand moves free-flowing across the terrain, rarely retaining enough sediment in a single location to form a dune. This definition may lead one to believe that dunes are inanimate, which, while technically true, doesn't paint the whole picture. Dunes are constantly changing from wind and water bringing new sediments to them and eroding others away. This process can cause dunes to move locations, and although the dune movement is inconsistent between locations and years, it's not insignificant. The climbing dune at Sleeping Bear has advanced an average rate of three feet per year, and dunes have even swallowed houses and trees that fell within their movement path. Once a dune has formed, there are many characteristics we can look to to differentiate them, including their shapes, their composition, and even the method in which they formed. For instance, a perch dune includes a steep cliff face or a bluff which can only form when water levels are high enough to erode an upper half of an existing sand dune, or if a glacier retreats, leaving behind a cliff face, as was the case at Sleeping Bear. This restriction in a perch dune's formation makes them far more rare than other sand dune types. However, Sleeping Bear has an excellent example of one, including many of the other types as well. Sand dunes are most common in places like deserts, where sand comes in abundance, which left me wondering. Why then is there such a large collection in Michigan of all places? And to answer this, I reached out to the park ranger, Dave Fenlin, from Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore Education Team. Ranger Dave explained that it takes consistent and strong onshore winds to form a sand dune. And at Lake Michigan, there's over 100 miles across the lake that wind is able to move unhindered, accumulating energy and speed by the time it gets to shore. This means it's got plenty of power to pull the sediments and sand up and over to the top of the sand dunes. Ranger Dave also mentioned that in addition to the wind or water that moves the sediments, you need sediments to move. That requires a constant and abundant supply of sand, which at Lake Michigan, the waves are constantly crashing and eroding the coastline, producing more sand. A fun fact about the dunes at Sleeping Bear is that bare sand is predominantly composed of quartz, unlike most sand dunes, which are typically formed from gypsum or calcite. It is the culmination of these things that has made Sleeping Bear the staple story to tell to children across Michigan and a must visit for people across the globe. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other video on the Niagara Escarpment, which goes over a cool rock formation located right here in Rochester. Or see this video YouTube has chosen specifically for you. Thank you.